Okay, next we have uh, Paul, who's uh, going to talk about uh, getting awareness for your uh, mapping event, mapping party. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I realize I stand between you and your lunch, so I'll try and keep this as concise as possible. Um, I'm, I'm from CloudMade. I'm, I'm director of uh, mapping and developer community, which basically means I help uh, market to to mappers and, and to developers and, and try and get them using our tools and products. Um, and I really want to talk to you a little bit about um, you know we've heard some great things about what OpenStreetMap is doing in the community and and uh, with with school children. And I really want to you know take how do we how do we take that to the next level in terms of you know, spreading the message and, and how do we get it to the masses? I mean, OpenStreetMap's a, a fantastic thing, um, but it wouldn't it be great if lots more people were involved? Um, so I, I really want to kind of just talk on four four points. Um, a little bit about on tips, you know, how to, how to publicize your event, your mapping party to, to press and, and get the word out there to, to the ma mass wider audience, not only to help attract attendees to your event, but also to generate buzz about OpenStreetMap in, in general. You know, obviously, if you're holding an event in Atlanta, that's great. But wouldn't it be great if also people in Boston took note that it was going on? And wouldn't that be a cool thing to do in Boston as well? So a little bit about that, and a little bit about how to sort of ramp up this buzz prior to the event. How you know what what you could do during the event, and also you know, what how do we continue the momentum on after the event? So, uh, in, throughout this talk, I, I'm going to kind of talk back a little bit about an event that happened in Atlanta, um, actually, uh, last October, which was a mapping event that I, I know some of you were involved with, um, just as a kind of a case study as to you know, what you could achieve with, with, with your events where, in, in your own locales. Um, so, just before I do that, is I, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about um, some tips for reaching out to the media. Um, a lot of... PR professionals have, have access to uh, media databases, and that's why a lot of them, uh, PR agencies are so successful in, in, in getting the press coverage that they do uh, because of these uh, vast resources to their, to, their, to hand. Now, a couple of these are, uh, uh, companies in the US are Cision and Focus, um, and, and they cost quite a lot of money to... to um, to, to, to use and to pay for. So there are other ways to do it. You, you don't necessarily need these tools. You can still go out and, and, and look on uh, easy, um, online uh, newspapers and, and magazine websites, and, and more often than not, you'll find the editorial contact there. It's normally an email address, not a phone number, because journalists tend to not like to be called up. Um, they're obviously very busy people and they get thousands and millions of pictures a day so they tend to just put a, an email address there but they do they do read them and if you provide an interesting pitch then they will respond to you. Um, so um, just to make it easier for journalists um, one thing that I've created is an OpenStreetMap fast facts document which is literally a two-page document which you can find at, at, on this URL uh, it links to the OpenStreetMap wiki and it really just highlights the you know what is the, what is uh, what is OpenStreetMap all about, um, and it does it in layman's terms. Um, so it's it's a kind of a, an at a glance document. So journalists have very little time; they can just scan through it and, and completely understand what OpenStreetMap does and get some examples about how people are using it and why it's benefiting people's communities. Um, a little bit about press releases. Um, I think there's this myth that press releases are old hat and and and, and you know it's the new thing in social media and. And I agree with to, to a point that that's true. However, press releases are still used; they are still distributed, and press still read them. Um, so I, I really recommend, um, if you are creating an event, that you have a press release. You keep it very clear, concise. The shorter, the better. Um, and when you send it to journalists, you you summarise it with some key bullet points, two or three bullet points about what the press release is saying. Um, because the, they'll only read those in the first instance. If you can drag them in with those, then you'll get them to read the rest of the press release. Um, and also, find out who the main people are in the event. Are there big organizations taking part? Who are the spokespeople going to be? And, and find out when they're available, so, so you can all present that information in the same email to the journalist. You're more likely to get a response from them if you do that. Be prompt. They also, you know, they're on deadlines. They have to meet these deadlines. So you've got to be quick when they when they uh, email you, <coughs> in order to get the, catch their interest. Just in terms of um, 
you know, how you might go about uh, approaching journalists if you're holding an event, um, I suggest you know you, you give them several heads up. Um, re going out going out to the planning desk, the feature editors um, three three weeks prior to the event is not a bad idea, so they've got it on their radar. Um, a kind of a media alert to say that the event's coming up um, and to watch out for further information. Um, with broadcast, um, traditionally they start planning around a week in advance. Um, however, having said that, news changes on a daily basis, as you know, so the, the day, day agenda will change um, day to day. So they will have a planning meeting the day before the news um, for the following day. So it's also advisable to reach out to them the day before the event to make sure that they know it's happening and, and to try and get um, uh, broadcast press to the event. And then news desk, again, two days prior to the event and then on the, on the, event, on the day of the event itself. And I really highly recommend using some of these free news wires, PR services, distribution services on the web. Um, uh, there are some ones that you pay for, um, and they obviously uh, achieve a, a wider uh, distribution net. Uh, but there are also a number of good free ones like Newswire PR Today and News Factor PR services where you can create an account, upload your press release, and have it distributed to a number of uh, news outlets. Um, just a bit about generating pre-event buzz. So, for the Atlanta Mapathon, um, we, you know there, were, uh, there have been a number of mapping events, but you know how, how do you create a buzz around a mapping event? How do you find a, an angle? You know what's the so what factor? Um, how do you differentiate from every every other mapping event that's been going on and make it like an interesting story? So, uh, for the Atlanta event last year, we we we, we termed it a mapathon. Um, you know we were having a two-day event. Uh, with I think it was 12 or 13 locations around Atlanta, and we really wanted to get this idea of that the you know the people of Atlanta were, were freeing the data and giving it back to the community, um, and so a number of you here very kindly offered to be spokespeople for that. Um, Jack and they very kindly volunteered, and we, prior to the actual event, we uh, had a journalist from BBC News Online uh, write the write the event up um, to talk about you know why Atlanta was doing it and, and why people should get involved. Which was fantastic, and it got a lot of pickup um, throughout the world. Um, <clears throat> it's really uh, one of the other things that we did was to get a, a local journalist involved from the Atlanta Journal Constitution, which I know a number of you are probably familiar with, and, and that's really great because they get the hands-on experience prior to the event. Um, we invited them to kind of a training event that we, we, we named it, and that was really to to get to make them understand the process involved with. Um, you know, creating the map and, and, and why it's important to the local community. Um, so we had a local journalist come from AJC to cover that. Um, and then, you know, again, make sure you know who the spokespeople will be on the, on the uh, you know, for this particular pre-event piece. Um, and make sure you explore all types of media. Um, you know, prints and online is great, but don't forget radio. It's a very powerful medium. Um, and uh, I'm just going to... OpenStreetMap lets you change that and add to it. If it's something you want to fix, and then the top says the, the button which says edit, and then you can go in and with a, a tiny little bit of practice, you can start doing things like moving a road, renaming roads. Because the free site is open to the public, you run the risk of pranksters. But folks says so far the problems have been operator error. The only real problem we've ever had is actually just people making simple mistakes. If they draw a, a freeway in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it's very, very easy to fix. The nonprofit organization <laughs> aims to map every corner of the world, and they're kicking off the drive for the weekend marathon in Atlanta, Georgia, involving hundreds of volunteers. You can head to OpenStreetMap.org to find out if your city is next. CNN Radio Computer Connection. I'm Jackie Howard. So, sorry about that, Steve. Um, but uh, I thought it was a nice little. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just a couple of tips for, for media interviews. Um, no tech jargon. So journalists don't like when you say, um, you know, it's all about adding nodes and waypoints and things like that. You've got to, you've got to bring it down to their level. You know, a lot of them are technical. Um, it's, it's like Wikipedia, but for maps. You know, they immediately get it when you say that. And then don't forget anything you, can, anything you say to a journalist can be quoted. So just be on your guard. You know, you, you want to make sure you've got your three points. Um, that you want to get across and, and, and have them in the back of your mind. 
and also you know try and speak in sound bites. Um, you know, journalists like quotable phrases. If you, you know if you can create some kind of similes to everyday life, then that's fantastic, and they'll use it. Um, always mention a website or URL. You know, when readers get more information. If you're running a mapping event, have a phone number where you can direct people to to have more information to get more information about the event. Um, so this is a little bit about regional press coverage. Um, we, we felt this was really important because obviously having the mapping party in Atlanta, um, we wanted local people to attend. So the Atlantic Journal Constitution was the obvious choice, um, and this was actually the journalist that we invited to the training day, um, so that he had all the facts and knew exactly what was going on and why we were doing it. Um, and he came out with a fantastic article actually on the day of the, uh, the day of the first day of mapping. Um, and included uh, um, a, 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 some information about how people get involved and the telephone number, etc. Um, it was supposed to be on the front page, but unfortunately, um, I think there was an incident with a child and a helium balloon uh, going <laughs> loose uh, on on the day. Um, so unfortunately, it got it got bumped from the front page, which was a shame. But um, uh, and then just some 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 information about you know. Um, Make make sure that you know if you're there, you, you dedicate someone to, to to looking after the media. They like to have their hands held when they do these things. Um, photographers want to know who are the spokespeople, who are the people to, I should be taking photographs of. What do you, what do you think I should photograph? Um, um, so just make sure those people are available, um, and obviously just don't forget how people can get involved. Um, post event, so you know, I think a lot of um, things that we forget is that you know you can carry on the momentum after after an event. Um, you know it's happened. You know it's, you've ha you've had success. Um, collect it, distribute it, use social media to to get the message out as wide as pos possible. Twitter, um, Pitch Engine is a great um, social media tool where you can go and upload press releases. You can then distill it into social media small chunks. Um, you can post it to f to Facebook. Um, you can do all this in one with one click of, of, of the mouse, so you know it, it, it's easy for for anyone to do it. Um, so I'd encourage people to do that. Um, you know, I mean, we were lucky enough also to get in the New York Times for the for the Atlanta um, uh, Mapathon, um, which was a combination of of, of reaching out to the journalist um, two two or three months prior, and um, having some great great um, spokespeople and, and people to participating in that. Um, and they, they sent a photographer there on the day as well to get this picture um, just outside the library here. Um, and, then, and then we also had local interest from uh, Fox, Fox News, so I'm going to embarrass someone else in this room now. underway in Atlanta this weekend, and by the time the project is over, Atlanta will become the most digitally mapped city in the world. But what exactly does that mean? It's free access to roads, phones, to the zebra exhibit at, the, at Zoo Atlanta, and just about everything in between. Box 5's Caitlin Pratt has the details. So we're pretty good. We need at least 44 satellites to get a... Uh a good fix on location. Deanna Hothorst is putting her personal touch on a new map of Atlanta. I was guided by the flood, and I'm very interested now to map my whole area, and I want to map the storm drain. She's one of 150 people helping the nonprofit Open Street Maps create the first crowdsourced map of a U.S. city this weekend. Yeah, so that's great potential, I think, to. Uh, First off, involve the community, and second off, uh, show our pride. Using a GPS, volunteers enter points they think are important. We look on a map, and there was just this little green blob. Right, right. You know, and now it has benches, it has picnic tables. Each point of interest is then uploaded to a computer, then a map. Besides practical points, the mapping also pinpointing fun ones as well, down to where the monkey exhibit is at the zoo. The driving idea is to personalize these maps. Who better knows their neighborhoods than the people who live there? For some, it's about having control over their own communities. Accuracy matters to me. Quality matters to me. Others just enjoy contributing to the bigger picture. Guys, in Atlanta, are really proud of their city. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, to make them off on it. So you're literally putting um, Atlanta on the map. We're literally putting Atlanta on the map. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> In Atlanta, Caitlin Pratt, Fox 5 News. Well, once the whole thing is finished, or almost finished, because it's a work in progress, the maps will be free and can be downloaded into some navigation systems. Thea Clay from OpenStreetMap is here to lay it all out for us. Thea, good morning. Hi, good morning. Yeah, so this was a really fun event. Um, how many people showed up for this mapping party? We had between 150 and 200 people show up. You know, it's, it was hard to tell because it was a little bit chilly, but, um, you know, people came out with their families, with their friends, and kind of roamed the streets of Atlanta, recording all of the great points of interest. That is so cool. And so it's a kind of like maps for the people, by the people. Yes, we, um, you know, it was started by a college student in the UK kind of in reaction to not having access to open data for maps. And, you know, the, the premise was if, if I map my neighborhood and you map yours, very quickly we can have a, a grassroots remapping of the world that the data can be free to everyone. Yeah, many of the major European cities have already been digitally mapped, like Berlin, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, what made uh, you guys want to start with Atlanta in the United States? You know, actually Atlanta picked itself, um, which was fantastic. Um, I came in June to speak with Georgie Orissa, and, you know, we were discussing how there really wasn't a flagship open street map city in the United States that could compare to, say, Berlin or Vienna in Europe, and the, the community in Atlanta just picked up the ball and ran with it. Um, and so we've had, we kicked off with this event this weekend, and there's going to be monthly and even sometimes bi-monthly meetings um, of the OpenStreetMap community in Atlanta. Yeah, because the project really is never finished. It's okay. constantly evolving because the users will uh, constantly be updating things depending on their needs. Yeah, we are the most accurate and up-to-date map available. When you, when you see a problem or a new building is built. You know, you can put that on instantly. It, it renders to the map within 30 minutes usually. That's going to be so useful for us here in Atlanta because our city is growing day by day by day. There's always something new mm -hmm. popping up. Um, so it's kind of like, would you say, a Wikipedia for maps? Because, but, but let's talk about, um, you know, the accuracy points mm -hmm. because, you know, that can be frustrating with maps sometimes. It is. I mean, we, that's also one of the, the main reasons why OpenStreetMap was created was, you know, a lot of times it can take major mapping corporations months, even years, to update their maps when new development comes in. And with OpenStreetMap, when something happens, our community can activate and go out and update the map and have an entire area up to date within a couple of days. So how, how does it differ, say, from, from like a Google Maps or Yahoo Maps or what, what's already available? Um, well, first of all, there are no licensing fees that are going to be attached to the data. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, you can look at these maps or use you know, download some directions offline, but as soon as you want to start actually manipulating the data or using it as a nonprofit or, you know, some type of organization, there's incredibly high licensing fees. Mm -hmm. And that really puts a barrier to people like students and community groups or even small businesses. And so OpenStreetMap is open, it's free, and you can also customize the map. So highlight the things that are important to you so you're not just stuck with how do I get from here to there? You can see things like street signs, speed limits, um, and even where the sidewalks are. Yeah, you can even now see colors of buildings or colors of houses. Take So the directions will be take a right at the red house. <laughs> there will really be a red house right there. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, thank you for stopping by and telling us more about this exciting new program. Keep up with Open Street Maps progress with Atlanta and other cities by visiting their website. You can link to it from ours at myfoxatlanta.com. We'll put the information on the Google so, yeah, just a, just a little uh, um, embarrassment there for a couple of people in the room. So, apologies <laughs> to those people. Um, and and really, um, you know, that that's it in a nutshell. There's a link here um, where people can get uh, further resources. What we did after after this project was actually, you know, write every, everything down that we did and and then put it on poster online and on the wiki so that you know people wanting to replicate this this um, exposure could, could do so and, and, and obviously my details are up there as well as uh, Thea's for anyone that wants to get in touch with us and find out more um, but, I, but I hope some of that information is useful um, and please feel free to, to, to give me a call or contact me um, if, if you need any more information. Yeah? So 
we're, we're here on a Saturday and Sunday together, so I consider us friends. Um, <laughs> our question is really friendly, but um, was this Atlanta effort, was that successful in your mind? Because I, did, I have, if I look at OpenStreetMap Atlanta, I'm not sure that the uptake really transpired with that was going for. Is that fair or? I, I think it's, it's sorry, do you, do you want to? Well, yeah. there's some of the people here from the Atlanta perspective. Yeah. Um, and it takes a while to build a community. Um, I, I know that a lot of the government agencies in the area, uh, there are 11 major core counties. Um, a number of them are very seriously looking at OpenStreetMap as a way of distributing data. But it takes governments two years to really make a decision to do something or not. So in some ways, we're too soon to see what's going to happen. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of buzz within the within big institutional partners um, that we would never have gotten if we hadn't had the event. I yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think we've we we definitely sowed the seed for for bigger and better things to come, um, just by through the through the awareness and, and through you know. Yeah. One other unfortunate occurrence that weekend was bitterly cold. It was really. It, it was really unusual for that time of year that it it was. It was really cold and really blustery, and no one wanted to go out and have. <laughs> it was like the too. really hardcore people, and so um, that that went against us, unfortunately, in that particular case. I think we would have had a lot more public participation if, if the weather had been nicer. Uh, so I think, yeah, you. So, um, so, so somebody else touched on this already. And yeah. We have the same issue in DC, and so, and, and I realize I'm going to keep this short because in we're going to have lunch soon. But, yeah. So we have the same issue in D.C., right? We have, we have we've had great uh, mapping parties. Uh, we've had big mapping parties, not, not as big as, as the Mapathon Atlanta, but 50, 50 people almost. Um, you know, the, the issue is, you know, keeping the community going past uh, large events is, is, a ch is challenging, mm -hmm. right? And it's challenging, uh, you know, as someone who runs these events, you know, it's challenging. And so the, I really think that's, that's the question that that's not getting addressed in this is okay we can we can make really big we can make really big events but how do we turn that into long term uh, community well, well i think you know with with pr and with with exposure you know i think if you can create that around your event and that buzz and excitement within the media and, and spread that to other areas of the us i think you know so long as there's a kind of a viral effect um, then then you're doing something right um, you know I, I noticed that when we when we did this event, um, there were a number of tweets that went out through Twitter saying, "Why aren't we doing this in Boston? We should be having a mapathon in Boston, and why, you know, why aren't we doing this in New York?" And you know, it just kind of it went on and on. The, the the people saying it, and 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 I'm hoping that they went off and then, um, you know, they actually went out and did it. So um, obviously, we need to do some follow up and, and find out if those people did. And yeah. um, but. Um,
then you can really take off with it. And I think it's just going to take us a little bit more time to build those individual communities around Atlanta. Yeah. That's a good point. I guess I don't agree because, I mean, we, I mean, Kate and I and Andrew started Mapping DC, and OSMUS was in a large part an outgrowth of that. And, it just, and I think that you know, getting that community to gel is not something that we have had. You know, we don't have that process now. Yeah. We, we have the process of mapping parties now, but we don't, we don't have that process. That's a good point. So, I think this is something we can discuss over beers. Because um, <laughs> um, uh, I have my own thoughts. But, uh, so lunch is in the other room. Uh, we're going to break till 2. There's salads and sandwiches, also vegetarian options, right through this way. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>